Thank you, Ian, for that uh, long introduction. You neglected to say that I'm from Victoria, which means that uh, over the last couple of months I haven't seen too many clouds like that. I know we're going to see some pictures, I think, of uh, Graham's beautiful property coming up and it'll look a little bit different than uh, what it did in those pictures. Uh, today I've been asked to give a, uh, a talk and a perspective on sustainable growth opportunities for dairy. And it's certainly the right time to be exploring this theme. Many dairy farmers in Australia are hurting and are facing extremely trying circumstances which are threatening their profitability and Trish just gave us an insight into, uh, into the pricing aspect of that. We, we feel very strongly that growth needs to be profitable for it to be sustainable. Certainly we feel our farmers pain and this is a real concern for us at, at Fonterra because as a cooperative we strongly believe that in order to build a sustainable and robust dairy industry for the long term we have to ensure that all players in the supply chain have an opportunity to be profitable. And without confidence around profitability, we can't expect the human and financial resources to commit to generating the efficiency and productivity our industry needs to grow to meet the world demand for dairy. So today I'd like to explore if, how we can achieve sustainability in the industry in Australia next year and beyond, uh, and doing that from a couple of perspectives. First what we're doing ourselves at Fonterra to drive sustainable growth and secondly where we see opportunities for the wider industry to work together. One of the wonderful things about, uh, about dairy is how closely linked our farmers and processes are. Uh, more than many other sector in agriculture, our futures are, are tightly coupled and together our revenues are largely dominated by global supply and demand factors which is something that we do have very little control over together. So in the current season, as Trish said, we're facing the reality of much lower prices driven by a rare year where supply significantly expanded virtually everywhere around the year in one, uh, in one year uh, and also outweighed demand around the globe during that period of time. So the result has been lower revenues for us, further pressured obviously by the high Australian dollar. However, this is a short term scenario and it's well documented that uh, our coll collective revenue opportunities are very bright. To make the most of these, we do have to focus our attention away from the uncontrollable factors and onto what we do have a clear ability to shape and manage in the future, in particular such as knowing what our customers value. Doing this will ensure that we are in the driver's seat to deliver on the increasing demand for dairy around the world and in Asia in particular. So let's briefly recap on this demand because it is a major opportunity, I won't dwell on it, it's a well told story. But uh, these figures confirm that China is no longer emerging, they have arrived and are now the single largest dairy importer in the world with a tremendous growth projection going forward. It's worth noting that it's taken China just 12 years to double its GDP compared to what Britain took, uh, which was 155 years during the Industrial Revolution. The US later took 53 years. So the rate of change has been massive. And it's fair to say that China's definitely arrived in that sense as a dairy importer and an economy, obviously. Increasing urbanization is associated with this rapid GDP growth across Asia and is expected to deliver us 3 billion more middle class consumers in Asia Pacific by 2030 alone. Uh, and with them also comes a westernisation to a degree of diet driving dairy demand and consumption. And these, firmly, these trends are firmly in place in China and across Asia and the Middle East. And demand will certainly continue to grow strongly across the region. But to make the most of this opportunity, we need to encourage and increase sustainable milk production that requires profitability for all our farmers. So we see four key areas where we can take meaningful action to support greater profitability through the supply chain uh, and build a more sustainable industry. So firstly, being innovative and flexible in how we work to build customer demand. Also reducing the cost of production both in processing and on farm. Thirdly, helping farmers better manage volatility in milk price uh, and in farm inputs because we hold the view very clearly that volatility is here to stay. Uh, and so we need to work with it and manage it better. Uh, and lastly, also to explore opportunities where government can help industry and farmers to grow collectively. So our view at Fonterra is that the Australian dairy industry cannot compete against other low-cost dairy producers by strictly selling bulk commodity products. So the most successful dairy businesses in Australia will not take uh, an average market return or a commodity market return and try to manage their cost base and pass that through to farmers. Uh, they'll work to gain an edge through higher value customers uh, and higher value products in that demand picture that I painted before. So we've been hard at work developing a portfolio of brands, customers and markets and are being very selective about where we compete as Fonterra. So, uh, so locally you'd be familiar with cheese, 
Mainland and Perfect Heliano brands, uh, Butter, Western Star, Yogurt, the ski brand, and increasingly pushing uh, the remainder of our portfolio towards higher value ingredient products such as infant formula powders. Fonterra around the world invests heavily in research and development which helps us to build our brands and our reputation for high quality and safe dairy products such as those powders uh, and innovate in areas where customer demand is growing. So all this combined with our flexible and responsive approach and, and a very broad global sales reach it's fair to say uh, means customers value and consistently demand our products and services. And this lets us grow strong and lasting customer partnerships and generate the highest possible returns we can, which ultimately flow back through the supply chain, ultimately to farmers. So a great, uh, a great example of success in getting this factor right and what it can deliver for us is the incredible growth rate in our export of paediatric or infant formula type products to China. And since 2008, we've more than doubled our export sales of those products to China. This unparalleled growth is partly due to the demand trends that we've, we've touched on, but also because we're leading innovation in this space and certainly have the right customer partnerships in place. And you'll see the corresponding drop in what we would call commodity powders, which is the, the products that Trish talked about before, skim milk powder, whole milk powder, for instance. And it's very much in line with our strategy to increasingly move our product mix towards those higher value products, which deliver on the everyday nutrition needs of growing and expanding populations. We also need to focus very heavily on cost reduction in the areas over which we have greatest control, both on farm and in our processing businesses. Currently we face high and rising inputs in energy, water and labour costs. You know, for us growing at millions of dollars a year uh, and it's certainly an ongoing challenge in our processing business to keep those costs down. So in our business we strip out as much cost as possible obviously and for the last several years we've run programs that have reduced the cost base or at least offset inflation by more than $10 million each year, and it never stops. So far we've done this through internal systems that prioritise and implement those cost reduction programs, uh, efficiency and productivity strategies. We know these costs will continue to rise and we have to continue to work really hard to boost productivity or offset them. So along the way we do make some tough decisions to stay competitive, but uh, it is a reality that Australia must compete with other low cost milk producers and processors on the world stage. Uh, and right now the cost increases that we have seen are certainly having a negative impact, particularly with the currency as well, on our ability to compete effectively against southern, some other of the major low cost producers, such as the US and Ireland. But for sustainable growth to happen, our farmers must also need to be able to control costs in their businesses. So farm input costs, and Trish again talked to some of them before, feed, fertiliser, energy, water and finance costs in Australia have been steadily increasing. This is impeding growth right now and certainly reducing the opportunities for investment that are necessary to deliver more growth in the future. In Victoria, where we have our largest operations, many farmers are saying this is one of the worst years they remember, particularly point from the point of view of rising costs, coupled with the, the season that we're having. And anecdotally, some of the most progressive farmers who want to grow are not and are waiting around until they have some more certainty around controlling costs uh, and around prices as well. So some farmers are certainly uncertain of what the future holds and the current environment is, is tough in that regard. There's a lot of pressure on profitability in the supply chain. But we do see that rebounding quite quickly into next year. So at Fonterra we're prioritising work that does help our farmers build more profitable businesses. And one area of this is our new milk supply agreement with the Bonlac Supply Company which has delivered for farmers a, a more sustainable model with undertakings around farm gate prices. Um, and aligned objectives that allow our farmers here in Australia to have equity in Fonterra's global performance for the first time. This season we also introduced individual income estimations tailored to each of our suppliers' farm businesses, and as Ian mentioned before, there's a substantial number of them, and we believe it's imperative that farmers get appropriate signals on price at a very granular and individual level. It might surprise some of you that the industry hasn't typically done that. Talking about averages and headline prices in the media and milk price, doesn't necessarily help an, average, uh, an individual farmer, none of whom are necessarily average, uh, to make the right choices in terms of selecting a payment scheme that best suits their operation. And our focus has been on helping our farmers make more informed decisions with that tailored and accurate information. We also help our farmers with programs to help them become more sustainable and reduce their production costs. So one of our most successful programs happening now is, uh, is helping farmers improve their nutrient management planning. Nutrient planning is largely about more efficient use of fertilisers and fertiliser, as Trish showed us again, is the second highest variable cost on a farm. By improving this, the average farmer sees productivity increases of around 5% in the form of either more milk or lower input costs or both. 
and this helps increase profitability and also helps suppliers reduce greenhouse gas emissions, obviously, and protect our rivers and streams. We've now funded almost 50 farms to undertake such projects, uh, and we've already received some funding from regional authorities to extend this program, and we hope the government will support this work at an expanded scale. We're also helping farmers tackle energy costs. For perspective, energy ranks as seventh, and again, Trish showed us, um, in terms of the high variable costs on farm, but it gets a lot of attention due to its recent increases. Energy price rises, partially due to the carbon tax, have certainly impacted farmer profitability, but our energy assessments found the average farm can find low cost efficiency savings in their dairy shed that actually offset the cost of the carbon tax. <laughs> and finally, we're working to help our farmers understand the impact of volatility, which we believe is here to stay. And developing dairy price risk management tools will ensure that we have the opportunities uh, to choose our exposures better through the commodity price cycle. So we've taken some steps, but we can't drive industry-wide sustainability on our own, and so there is a role for government to play in this as well. Our industry is changing fast, and to deliver on the opportunities that growing markets like China present, we need to have a profitable and sustainable supply chain that allow us to, meet, to grow production to meet demand. And government and industry working together, we can ensure uh, that we make a positive step towards that. So we think it'll take targeted assistance from government in, uh, in areas to ensure that dairy farming can be more resilient and weather the downturns uh, so that it does have a sustainable future in, in Australia. So support for farm business uh, planning and management services, incentives to help farm and processes transition to new technology uh, and assistance to transition to a low carbon economy is certainly all things that we see benefits in as well. Uh, incentives for more efficient use of inputs like fer energy, fertiliser and water to increase farm productivity, profitability and sustainability. Uh, we also talk to an overarching dairy industry logistics strategy which will identify ways to improve infrastructure to reduce shipping costs, which is an issue certainly for uh, those of the industry that are in Tasmania. Help processes collaborate to reduce the cost of bulk milk collection uh, and improve the road network to enable more efficient and safe milk collection and reduce greenhouse gases. Uh, certainly, improved terms of trade is another area of market access for, uh, for Australian dairy products uh, and industrial relations suitable to the unique requirements of, of dairy. So just to conclude, uh, we see the opportunities around the world for Australian dairy are real and are very significant, but they're only accessible if we can get the settings right for sustainable growth. Grow growing supply and, and profitability, of course, is not easy, but we must do so sustainably and improve our supply chain and manage volatility along the way. To be successful in this increasingly competitive environment requires strengthening our focus on key factors, including innovation, customer partnerships, productivity and efficiency to manage costs, all the while recognising and mitigating the risks along the way. Australian dairy does have a strong track record of success in these areas, but we can't let up now. If government and industry work together uh, to achieve these things, then farmers will be more profitable and our industry will continue to thrive into the future. So we must continue to innovate, invest and drive for that, uh, for that future. At Fonterra, our goal is to be the natural source of dairy nutrition for consumers around the world. This is actually realistic and achievable, but involves us evolving together to ensure that profitability for everyone in the supply chain. And most importantly, doing it, it is doing about what our customers most value. Only then can we really leverage the amazing growth opportunities that are available into the future. Thank you.